for Lesson 3, we're still looking at evaluating the key political, social, and economic changes that occurred in Georgia between 1877 and 1918. For this lesson, we're focusing on Thomas Watson and the Populist and Rebecca Latimer Felton. This will be the last lesson that you will need to complete in order to finish the graphic organizer on who would you most like to meet. As you watch the video, you can finish the graphic organizer and work on your tip chart. There are three key questions that this lesson will help you answer. What key political issues affected the development of the state during the New South era? What were the beliefs of the populist and how did populist Tom Watson change Georgia and the nation? And what were the differences in political views and philosophy among the following? Bourbon Triumvirate, Henry Grady, Tom Watson, Rebecca Latimer Felton. Tom Watson was one of the most popular and most controversial figures in Georgia history. He was born in Columbia County, and his early law and political career were based on supporting the poor tenant farmer and sharecropper of both races. When he was elected to the Georgia General Assembly in 1882, he supported the end of the convict lease system and was a proponent of public education for all Georgians, black and white. However, due to his discontent with the policies of the New South advocates in the General Assembly, Watson resigned before the end of his term. Although he was a Democrat, in 1890 he adopted some of the policies of the Farmers Alliance, which was the precursor to the Populist Party. On a platform of lower taxes for the poor farmer, Watson was elected to U.S. Congress. In Congress, Watson gained national notoriety for his leadership role in the passage of the Rural Free Delivery Act, or RFD. However, most of the other ideas that he supported uh, never came to fruition. In 1892, uh, though supported by farmers of both races, he lost his election bid to Congress. Watson received a lot of support from many black rural voters in Georgia because he was against lynching and he defended a black supporter that was almost lynched by a white mob. Because of his support of the Farmers Alliance ideals, the Populist or the People's Party selected him as their vice presidential candidate in 1896 and the presidential candidate in 1904 and 1908. Even though nationally he was not a threat to major political parties like the Republicans and Democrats, in Georgia he remained a political force in the state and local politics. Unfortunately, around 1904, Watson began to change his progressive views toward, uh, toward race, and by the end of his life he was a fervent white supremacist. He not only targeted African Americans, but Catholics and Jews as well. He used his newspaper and his magazine, The Jeffersonian, to promote his political, social, and economic viewpoints to Georgians. Though it was popular in the South, and even in some northern cities such as New York, according to some, his series of articles against Leo Frank led to his lynching. Ironically, it was Watson's anti-capitalist articles and the opposition to America's entry into World War I that led to the U.S. Postal Service to refuse to deliver his publications. Watson remained popular among rural Georgians. In 1908, he ran for Congress again, only to lose to Carl Benson. Eventually, Tom Watson won an election in 1920, and he was selected to be one of Georgia's U.S. Senators. However, he died soon after in 1922, and his seat was given to the first female senator, Rebecca Latimer Felton. Rebecca Latimer Felton was a writer, political activist, reformer, and the first female senator in U.S. history. She was born in DeKalb County, Georgia, and graduated from Madison Female College. During her graduation is where she met her husband, William Felton. After the Civil War, her primary focus was the political career of her husband, who served three terms in the U.S. Congress and three terms in the Georgia General Assembly. As members of the Independent Democrat Party, 
The Feltons spent years battling with members of the Bourbon Triumvirate, especially John B. Gordon. They fought over each of their self-serving policies. Felton supported many progressive causes, including abolishing the convict lease system, prohibition, and most importantly, women's suffrage, or equal the, e the right to vote for women. In 1899, she began writing a column for the Atlanta Journal and continued writing for over 20 years. This endeared her to rur rural Georgians across the state. Upon the death of Tom Watson, Georgia Governor Thomas Hardwick appointed Rebecca Felton as a temporary U.S. Senator in honor of her work and achievements in the state. Even though Rebecca Felton was a progressive, she shared some of the white supremacist views of many of the other Georgians during this time period. For example, she was instrumental in the firing of Emory Professor Andrew Sled for an article that he published condemning the South's racial policies. In addition, her public speeches, in many of her public speeches, she supported lynching to protect the white women of the South. For more information, look at Google Classroom for the following links on Thomas Watson, the Populist Party, Georgia Women of Achievement, and Rebecca Felton. Now that you're done with this lesson, you should be able to complete the graphic organizer, Who Would You Most Like to Meet? After completing part one, don't forget to write your speech indicating which of these public figures you would like to meet and why. And then add these people to your, to your tip chart and respond to the key questions.